morning folks <clears throat> Thursday morning coldest of the year let's go see how Craig's doing not happening <laughs> I'm here. not coming here so today we're in Putnam County. Um, that's between Rockland and Westchester County. It's a wealthy area, it's a nice area. Uh, we're doing work for a company. Uh, it's an LLC who, they flip homes, they buy them and flip them, they give us almost all of their work. So today, for some reason, they want to tank abandonment. We looked on the Google Maps search and it's wide open. So. When you do a tank abandonment, basically you do it because there's no access or it's affecting the integrity of the structure. So it's normally a tough one. And what we do is with shovels, we hand excavate down to the top of the tank. We'll cut an access hole in it. We'll cut it, open it up, pump out the product. Mikey gets inside of it, does his normal cleaning. The inspector inspects it. And then we backfill it with 3 8 pea gravel, an inert material that uh, the tank's eventually going to get hole, uh, holes in it. So when the water does seep in after a while, um, it doesn't break it down. Like sand will break it down, foam will break it down. The best product is either a 3 8 pea gravel or concrete. Uh, concrete's a little more expensive. So we use the pea gravel, but today I may use that concrete, number one. Secondly, I ain't doing it by hand because I'm not going to hand dig through 12 inches of frost. So. Casey and Krista, why are we scheduling abandonments in winter? I can just imagine what Casey said to me right there, and there may have been a bad word. So we're bringing the machine. I don't care, we're digging it up. Uh, because right in our proposal, it clearly states we do it by hand. So hopefully there's no problems there. And we're gonna load up, do what we do every single morning, go to quick check, get some snacks, fuel up, and we'll see you in Putnam County. Okay, so that stuff was frozen solid. So we'll deal with the blocks of frozen item once we get out there. Forgot to say congratulations, Sir Oblivion. Great name, by the way. For winning the, uh, the door closed challenge. Everybody was off pretty bad. We got back here at 12.22, so we're faster than that, guys. Although, Craig did say in the video we had an 1130 inspection and he decided to show up a little after 10 which made everything go much quicker but that's cool that many people are involved and want a hoodie so I didn't tell you we also have a an installation today we hope it's inside uh, but Mike he did us a solid and yesterday when he got back he took the tank down, set it up, and installed it. So we love Mikey today. Mikey, nice job on that. And Corey. Good job, Corey. 
So we will um, head on out. Probably an hour and 35 minutes to get there. Hopefully access is fine. And the project goes smooth and the homeowner's not mad that we brought an excavator on an abandonment. So a lot of times when we get on a major highway like this, I go ahead of the boys to see if there's a DOT stop. So we're coming up to it. If it is, we let them know and they reroute. If there's anybody out there that knows, I know there's a, a Facebook page where truckers get on and they notify others. If, if you know another way to avoid DOT stops, put it on the comments, would you? Because this is annoying and it's not as if our trucks are illegal. It's just the hour downtime we gets put into our schedule, number one. Number two, you could roll on site with 150000 dollar truck with eight miles on it they'll find something okay we have arrived to Carmel uh, Putnam County access isn't bad everything's frozen we'll probably pull the box trailer in there and this will be our access in with the machine so it's all frozen and when we backfill with the Mason dump truck. Tank is right here. I don't know why they don't want the tank removed. So I'm actually gonna call them up and suggest they move it. They remove it. I mean they're buying this place just to flip it. So when they go to sell, the fact that it's still in the ground, although they did comply with local ordinance, you know, Carmel says you can fill them in place. I'm coming with a machine. Pull the darn thing out. But we'll see what they say. And I wouldn't charge an extra. So the new installation is going inside here. Which the boys will be very happy because it's nice and warm. Craig will probably want to set it right there a long way. And then we'll send our fill and vent out through here we just got to look at that vent and see where it is so we'll see what we're running into and we'll probably tack the return and suction lines come in around and then we'll tie right into the burner there and here comes Craig I've already texted him let him know how I wanted it situated their reaction and now how about this for an install right over there what are you thinking nice and warm make it happen we're happy hey i thought you'd be happier Woo! right here mm. up and out you say no. I don't think so. Where? I think it's out this way. Why? Five it's feet. Be five feet. Oh, see, that's why I got you. So that would make it two feet. You are correct. That's why Craig makes the big bucks. <laughs> I thought there'd be a problem with the window, but no? No. Okay. Let's do it then. So Corey has gotten some paste to soften up. So we'll check the level of oil. That looks like it's got 200 gallons plus in it. That's a lot. And just a tracing at the bottom, but I'm gonna say no water. But we got a lot of oil. 39, 30, 38 and a half. 38 and a half. The 48 diameter, so. We'll have to be, we'll be getting rid of some oil. All right.
way, Corey's got the top of it. It's about all uncovered. I'd like to get a, a strip long enough for me to get my bucket in there. Then I can make sure we fill it good. So if you can, Corey, that'd be good. <laughs> That's an extra half hour ago than I just gave him. Alright, cool. So we're going to decommission this in place. Township allows it. Uh, so, you know, normally they come out by hand and they dig a hole. Most companies will just dig a hole just large enough for a man to get inside of it. And then they'll begin to backfill with either sand or pea gravel. We've already went through that. Sand is not good. And the reason is when you put sand in that and it's just that small of a hole, you basically get an hourglass effect. It never really gets to that end of the tank properly. That's why pea gravel is a little bit better when you do that because it's self free flowing and self compacting. That's why it's a better product. But when I do a tank abandonment, I cut the entire top of the tank open. The entire thing. Safety reasons, if a man ever gets stuck down in there, uh, we've got an issue trying to fish him out. Uh, even though we do have harnesses, um, we'll cut the entire top so when I put the product in, the entire tank 100% is going to be filled. Uh, this one, when you put the overburden on it, it doesn't sink and cave in on you a little bit. But if you can remove the tank, even though he's complying right here with the local ordinance, Carmel says, yes, you can decommission a tank in place. The new buyer's attorney will still have an issue with it. They'll say, well, we, we complied and we had inspections. I don't care. I don't want a tank in ground. I probably remove, I'm going to say, in excess of 30 tanks per year that were already previously legally decommissioned in place because of that. The attorney as advising their client, the new buyer, to not purchase the home, even with all the paperwork. So if you can remove it, remove it. Corey's gonna try to cut as big of an opening as he can here. tank can you come and install the tank and that they they assume you know there's not going to be any any tank parts uh, added to it because they have a tank but these are the parts that need to come along with the tank we have inch and a quarter by six inch threaded nipple and we have a inch and a quarter flange four flanges four six inch nipples we'll need a 90 swing joint coming up and out that's a male to a female and then another one male to a female we'll need a vent alarm sight gauge combo and then we'll need another swing joint up and out you'll need a two inch plug you'll need a two inch duplex with the copper flared fittings for the and they're going to be half inch in this case for that you'll need one 40 foot roll of copper once we get here we'll need from there to there it's going to be a two inch black pipe threaded on both sides the same with that once we get over to the burner we need all the flare fittings to install with that, you don't have the sight gauge or tongue. Right the glass is on the corner? No, the fill in there. Oh, no. Then when the two inch lines come out here, we need a scully with cap. That's the device that the oil man hooks his nozzle up. It's got to be 45 degree with a cap. And then you've got to come out with a 90, come up another six inch 
two inch threaded nipple and then a mushroom cap on it. So all these extras to go along with a tent, probably in excess of $300. So I get that a lot where they say, I, got, I have the tank, you know, they bought it at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, but then there's $300 added to it. Plus there's the time, you know, and they're not gonna have the threaded black pipe. We have to thread that on site. So for me, uh, the amount that I pay for these tanks because I get them directly from Granby, it's probably a little bit less than what you're paying for a crappy tank at Lowe's um, with no warranty. These things have a five, a 10, a 20 and a 30 year warranty depending upon uh, your application. Don't, don't buy a tank, you're not saving a lot of money. And for me personally, unless that tank has a minimum of a 10 year warranty, I won't even install it. So Craig is starting to drill, so to make sure there's no problem here. Give it a little pressure when it comes through so you don't pop the siding out of the track. Go ahead. Watch your fingers on it. It'd be better if I had a piece of plywood just to lay over it. I know. Yeah. We'll clean that up. Cut it with an X-Acto knife. That's why we have that scutching that goes around it, and then that will all be uh, marine caulk there. And the reason why that happens is because it's so cold out, it's brittle. See if we can try to avoid that. Right when he pokes through with that little center um, drill to it, we'll stop, and then we'll try to drill it from the outside in. Craig drilling and that's daddy I don't even do installs wisdom wisdom comes with age kids pay attention to the old people when they talk you may learn something so Mikey is doing his his drop tubes he's flaring that that goes down through the duplex. He's already got one in. What's the length on that, Mike? I don't know, you gave me a beautiful tape device. Oh, that's right, I got you. I got you. But we do it, it's true. It's 43 inches, which is probably a two inches off the bottom of that tank. So if you haven't ever seen a flare, Compression fittings for us, nothing but flare. Then what, you drop that down in? Yeah. <coughs> there you go. So we're gonna measure the distance here. So if you look, there is the threading on the inside of that. So Craig sends the tape through. And he pulls it 
right off the edge. Hold on, Craig. And then Craig comes out how far? Be two inches off the house. Two inches off the house, so it looks like it's going to be 26 inches. Correct. So Sammy will cut the pipe at 26, and it'll give you about an inch of threading. So we're running the second line right now. We wrote it, rub roll it out in general, just to get our distances. Then we'll cut it, and then we'll go along and we'll fasten them together. Try to make it as straight as possible, and then we'll drill it into the wall. Okay, so we're sending through the actual pipe, and Craig will thread it. Normally, uh, we'll have that pipe in here and set already with the pitch, and then we just push the whole tank and slide it through the holes. But because we have a wood floor, we have to do it this way, which makes it much more difficult. Go ahead. Send it. It makes it a lot more difficult because this has to be lined up perfectly now. So when he starts to turn it, you don't want to have a cross thread. So Craig is doping it up now. And that's it. And then he'll thread that in. Bam, good job. So we're unable to pump because the pump's frozen. So since it's been so long, now we're just going to pump that oil directly into the tank. And the pump is inside the truck right now by the heater. Yesterday we pumped out 340 gallons of water and we, we flushed it afterwards, but still. A little bit of water in that thing and it was inside all night so from the time that we put it into the trailer for the hour and 30 minute trip here froze up inside where the impellers are love the cold weather okay progress the pump is unfrozen and we are now filling i don't know if you can hear that vent it's whistling that's what that is, it's a whistle vent. As the oil comes in, it fills up the tank, the air has to excrete out. There's a whistle in there, the reason that is, is once the tank gets to 95% capacity, the whistle shuts off. Oh. Okay, we've got these doped up. Oh, that's a good marine cork right there. With our six inch riser or nipple. That's our mushroom cap for the vent, and Sam is working on the fill. Craig is now running that copper. Just tries to get it as straight as possible, not have it rolling over, just kind of make it uniform so it looks like we put an effort in. It'll go probably every two and a half feet, and it'll zip tie it. Once we get it as straight as possible, then we'll fasten it in and then we make sure that we hit a joist. We don't just send it through the sheet. So if you can't for some reason, and it does happen, if you can't get uh, the joist, we like to use these. These are sheetrock fasteners. So that goes and it gets a good grip on the sheetrock. Get that? And we put our clip on and then that goes through it. So that works, that's good if we can't get a joist, but definitely try to get a joist. Same process with an abandonment. The only difference is a little bit harder to see if there is an environmental impact because 
can't test beneath uh, the tank or you can't visually see beneath the tank when the tank's out and you can't see the outside of the tank. So some of the townships actually want us to drill through the bottom and procure an analysis 12 inches below the base of the vessel. I don't know whether this township requires, I'll check the file. Um, if he does, we also have to look because a lot of the townships, if that is the case, the inspector wants to see you do it. Um, I guess because they don't believe you. Why else? So Sammy's got this all completed now. All marine cork there. So we'll paint that now and then we'll put the scutchings on and we'll cork those scutchings. And if you can see the vent pipe is six inches higher than the fill, which is code. Yeah, very nice. That's all secured, zip tied. It's got those vibration clips on it. You know, we keep it a little bit off just in case somebody kicks. They don't kick the copper and, and crimp it closed. But we're doing good. Scritchings are on the inside here. Got a very obviously a nice pitch right there for the fill so the oil comes in because of that. Go check yours. I bet you it's just a straight 90. All right, the building inspector has shown up. That tank is good. There's no holes. He may not like me videoing him. Prosperity. <laughs> now nah, we're good. Yeah. We'll see him come out now. He's on time though. That's cool. This tank is good. There's no problems. They wanted to build it in places beyond me, but. Huh? Why they wanted to do it just decommission it in place uh, is beyond me. So that's good. There's nothing in there. Okay, you're good to go. She's clean. We'll start the backfill. We're going to fill that with an item crusher dust. Okay. That's why I open up the whole top. This way we'll get the whole thing filled. Get it right in. You got it, brother. I appreciate good. you coming out on time. No problem. That's rare. Well, I know you guys generally are done around 11 30, yeah, 12 yeah. o'clock. Yep. So as you can see, that's clearly completely filled, right Mikey? That's how you do it. So we're going to put the lid directly over top of it, set it in place. All right, take that off, Cor. We'll just maneuver that right in place. There you go. We'll slam it down, compact it. I'm gonna break up all these frozen pieces. We'll put it on top. Tank abandonment in place. That's how you do it, guys. Okay, we'll just get a quick final of the tank. Scooching is all done. Just gonna do the final painting. The lines all run to the burner. It's all nice and clean. Uh, there is the fill in the vent with the scutchings. That's all painted. We're all backfilled and compacted. Clean it up now. Yeah. That's another fine job. Like Tank Masters Environmental. 